Hi, I'm Drex, and this is the fifth and final video of my tutorial series on linear extensions. So far, we've learned what a linear extension is, how we can create shapes with them, and multiple ways that we can use them to create patterns with both hands. In this video, we'll talk about how we can chain together some of these patterns to create what are sometimes called third-order motions, or fractal flowers. Let's start by taking our old friend, the triquetra. We normally think of this pattern as having three sides of equal length, but if we take one of the corners of this pattern and make the lines that meet there twice as long, we can add three additional lines to create a pattern that nests three triquetras together. You may have noticed that this is one of those patterns that reflects across a vertical axis, but not a horizontal axis. So we can easily learn it in both together same, as well as together opposites. Just like we learned in the third video, we can also add a second pattern pointed in the opposite direction to make it work in split time opposites or split time same direction, where it winds up looking somewhat like a hexagon. We can also perform this pattern as a polyrhythm hybrid. Just like with the triquetra, start by repeating each segment two to four times before moving on to the next one, and work your way down to moving through each line only once. Now let's try a different third order motion. This one will involve many more steps but produces a very satisfying result. Let's take a series of lines that look a bit like an arrow pointing up. You can think of this as being like a flattened triangle with an additional line cutting it in half. You'll want to learn versions of this shape both with the arrow pointed up as well as the arrow pointed down. Notice how they both share that line through the middle? We're going to use this line to switch between them. As you complete the down arrow, try using this line to move to the middle of the up arrow. When you complete the up arrow, use this same line to move back to the middle of the down arrow. This will take a little bit of practice, but results in a very cool looking and overlapping pattern where you are always in anti-spin. If you're having problems with the arrow visualization, another way that you can think of these patterns is as being the directions and orientations of your hands. Let me show you what I mean. For together same, we can think of it as being both hands down, right, left, down, up, left, right, and up before returning down, which we find works just as well as thinking of it as two arrows that are chained together. We can apply this to all timing and directions. For example, if we wanted to work in together opposite, we would also include positions where the hands are open and the hands are crossed, in which case we go down, crossed, open, down, up, open, crossed, up, and down to complete the pattern. For split time opposites, we need to include a position where each hand is on top. So for example, we would start right top, right, left, right top, left top, left, right, left top, right top, like so. And finally, for split time same direction, we use the uh, special cases that we came up with in together opposite and split time opposite and start left top, open, crossed, left top, right top, crossed, open, right top, and left top, like so. Don't stress it if you're not writing these down. I will include all these directions inside the description of the video. Is there a polyrhythm version of this pattern? Yes, and it gives us a chance to switch which hand is performing anti-spin. To learn this version of the pattern, Pick any path through it that includes a figure eight, like this. A nifty side effect of performing this version of the pattern is that it switches between together time and split time opposites, providing opportunities to switch into other tricks that use the same timing and direction. Polyrhythmic third order motions, based in a diamond configuration, are often referred to as Zan's diamond. And there you have it. All of these poi moves, whether intermediate or advanced, can more or less be broken down to just moving your hand in a straight line. Now, granted, there's a lot of practice and muscle memory that'll go into putting any one of these moves into your flow, 
But in the meantime, you now have a new tool for breaking down the tricks that you see other poi spinners do, plus which a new way to create your own tricks. If you found this tutorial series helpful, please let me know by leaving me a comment on YouTube. If you'd like more information on any of the topics that I've covered in this series, please visit me on the web at drexfactor.com or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy the flow. Peace.